Are there any additional amendments? The gentleman from Calvin. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, this bill, primary and secondary education, comprehensive health education framework says that if the state superintendent determines that you're not teaching everything that they're telling you to teach, then he can take away 10% of your state funding. Teach what we tell you or we take away your money. But what if the kids aren't learning? Way too many schools in this state have children that aren't learning. Way too many schools are failed schools. Recently, there was a story, I believe it was 23 schools in Baltimore, where not a single student tested proficient in math. It's extraordinary. How is that possible? Why would we keep doing the same thing? And every year we Does come back Does the gentleman have an amendment? Yes, ma'am. Okay, let's get to it. Let's get to it. It's amendment number 119-8133-261. Amendment number one. Move so much be considered the reading of the amendment, Madam so Speaker. So ordered. 23 schools, failed schools. And there are other schools across the state, the state that also have similar issues where not a single student tested proficient in math. And it just never seems to get better. So I ask you a question. Do you have liberty? Do you really have liberty and freedom if you can't take your kid out of one of those failed schools and go somewhere else? You do not have liberty. You are not free. And so this amendment simply states that if a public school does not have at least 51% of its students scoring proficient in math, the state superintendent shall require the comptroller to withhold 100% of the state funding. And that state funding shall be distributed by the comptroller to the parents so they can choose a, a, a school that actually works. And they can choose a charter school, an independent school, a parochial school, a private school, a public school, or a military school. Someone recently said in a book, my mother said I was failing and my grades were slipping. And I started getting in trouble with the law. So she sent me to Valley Forge Military Academy the governor of Maryland. There are many, many people who have children who could benefit from a similar experience. Experience. There are so many people that could benefit from going to a school that works, a school that fits their needs, rather than the one-size-fits-all statism that comes from this body. How many years will we go in the Maryland General Assembly before we let people be free and finally choose an education that works instead of condemning generation after generation in so many parts of this state and most definitely in Baltimore, my hometown, place where I was born, to more squalor, more decay, no opportunity, what can a student possibly do and what can an adult do out of those schools in the job workforce if they can't test proficient in math? And so, Madam Speaker, this simple amendment empowers the citizens of the state who have children stuck in failed schools once and for all, and it sets them free. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Chair of the Committee. 
Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'll be brief. I mean, I think people see uh, what this amendment is. Uh, I've received so many texts during that speech. Um, it is so interesting. One, I didn't know how long it was going to take you to mention Baltimore City, but it wasn't long. Uh, and two, uh, a couple sessions ago, it was don't defund the police, but this session it's defund the public schools. That's essentially what this bill will do. Uh, I ask you to reject this amendment. Thank you. On the amendment, all in favor signify Madam by Speaker. saying aye. Opposed? No. Roll, call. Roll call. Madam Speaker. Has everyone recorded their vote? Clerk will take the call. The amendment failed.